Sam Marcus was just sitting here talking about how many football games you've played, obviously. Does this feel like the biggest one, or where does it rank for you? Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a big game. Um, obviously, you know, any game, college game day, whatever you want to call it. Um, I mean, I think it's a huge opportunity for us as a, as a program and as a team, um, you know, to go out there and, and show what we got. And um, obviously a really challenging opponent, a historically um, great pro- opponent, great football program, um, and another like ourselves as a great uh, football university. So I think it's a class of two football greats that growing up, you know, you, you kind of think about and, and look at those games of, you know, Ohio State and all the other big ones. That you're like, you know, that, that'd be a cool game to play in. And so um, it's exciting. Um, it is a big game. I think to shy away from that is, is foolish, but um, I think it's it's going to be like every week. Is it going to be about us executing at the highest level? And, and like Coach Wien probably already said, reaching our full potential. You kind of alluded to it there as well, but didn't grow up in this part of the country. So I'm just curious what it means for you to, to be a part of something like this, Notre Dame, Ohio State. I think it's only the seventh time these two teams have played each other. Um, I mean, I think it's just big, um, you know, big for the university, big for the, the our team in, in this season. Um, obviously, the the road to, to the finish line leads through, um, you know, this game and, and really every game for us. Um, but obviously, it's a it's a big challenge. Um, it's going to be um, a huge crowd, a huge huge ordeal here with college game day, um, everything included. But we're gonna you know try and keep our blinders on, put blinders on as much as we can and. Um, understand that it's just going to be, uh, you know, one play, one life. Second row on your far right, Tom Noy. Sam, you've talked about the reasons of being at Notre Dame for a sixth season, but to flip it, maybe Notre Dame needs you here to play and win a game like you're going to play in on Saturday. So how how do you stay in just being Sam Hartman and not having to be Superman in, in what you're going to face on Saturday night? Um, I mean, I think it starts, uh, you know, with the confidence in our coaches, our confidence in um and the schemes that we're going to get into and then and the players around me i think um you know we have an unbelievable o-line uh, that i have a lot of confidence in um our running backs have been all been playing incredibly well tight ends have been doing great and outside i mean we showed we have some explosive capabilities and the ability to you know spread the ball around when you need to and be able to run the ball when we can so that that's really where it is and in our defense we've been playing a lot of complimentary football um, you know, you look at the NC State game, there's times where we get shut out or they let up a score and we kind of bounce back off each other. So, um, you know, it's always going to be about doing my job as, as the best I can do and, and the plays are going to come when they need to be. But um, it's a lot of it's just the trust, the trust and belief that, you know, everybody around me is doing their job, which they've been doing all year and we've been doing since the spring. Um, so it's, it's just exciting. It's an exciting opportunity to go out as a team and, and play a, a complete game. This week's already different for you because you're standing here talking to us on a, on a Monday. On a regular Monday, 12.30, what would you be doing instead of being here? Uh, probably eating lunch. Um, you know, I think it's pretty, 12.30 is probably lunchtime. Um, so probably eating lunch. I had to eat that pretty quickly. Um, but then we're back. I got a lift um, like 1.30 and then we're in team meetings and, and then practice from there. And then, um, you know, late watching film, studying, getting ready for the game. Third row on your far left, Doug Maurice. Hey Sam, this is, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of questions like this, but when you have the experience you have, just how do you feel it tangibly comes out compared to when you were a young quarterback playing in games like this? What, what, what How does it actually help you once the game starts? I mean, I think you feel all the same emotions because you want to succeed, you want to play well. And I think that's, um, you know, everyone in this room when you have a big due date or a big, big important deadline to hit you know you feel the nerves you feel the excitement you feel whatever you feel um and a lot of it's just uh, the want to to be the best to have success and and prove um people right or wrong in whatever regard and um I mean I think my you know again it's a lot of it just revolves around the confidence I have walking into the goog um with the people that are around me starting with coach Freeman down at the very bottom um I think that's that's where I find it. And so that's kind of what I rely on. I mean, I think experience is experience, but I mean, every play you play is going to be different than the last. And so it's just going to be about trusting the guys around me and, and you know, knowing that the support group around me is, is really, really talented and, and they believe in me and I believe in them. I know it's early in the week, but you have an early read on the Ohio State defense, Jim Knowles as a second year coordinator there, what he likes to do. 
I mean, I think it just starts with them as, as their kind of uh, quarterback to their defensive linebacking cores. Um, you know, two really stout players that have played a lot of football. Um, obviously, it really just encompasses, encompasses their front seven. Um, you know, a lot of experience, a lot of talent there. And their secondaries, again, brought back a lot of guys from last year that are all extremely talented. And so, um, you know, we know we have a challenge on our hand. And, um, you know, they, they do a lot of things up front, very multiple. And so, um, again, you know, going into this game, it's going to be a, a battle for all four quarters. And they're going to bring it. And they got a lot of experience as well. So, um, you know, it's an exciting challenge, but not something that we're going to take lightly. Second row on your right, Mike Brandino. Hey, Sam. Uh, you played uh, in a number of games, I guess, uh, against ranked teams, but is there a particular tough outing against a ranked team? Maybe I'm thinking Pitt, um, maybe I'm thinking Wisconsin, but um, where the failure or you know, falling short of what you hope to do is something you can plug into this week and make it better. Um, yeah, I don't really know what the question is there, but well, I mean, learning uh, from failure or personal. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, yeah, we all have tough games and we all have um, tough losses. I don't think, I think Wisconsin was probably, we were both like four and five at that point. So, yeah, it's not very ranked. Ranked, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's all about just, again, one play, one life um, mentality and just being able to, you know, bounce back from bad plays, good plays. I think the, the guys around me and the guys up front are all really good at keeping me up and, and keeping me clean and, um, you know, just the bounce back one play one life mentality is probably all I got there. And then you, you kind of segued into it. Steve's is is a is an actual word. I didn't know that till you got here, and it, and seemed something you seem to identify with. Uh, it, who gave that to you? Who pinned that to you? Why does it work for you? How can it help everyone around you? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think it's uh, you know something I got when I was young at Wake. Um, just kind of like a style with ease type deal that um a, a flow whatever you want to call it but uh i mean i think everybody's different in their own way um it's not something i completely uh have sold out to but it's just something that is an easy tagline for me that um you know there was guy there was a 10 before me at wake so nobody called me 10 and there was already a sam on the team so they had to create something else so that's probably the root of it Second row, middle right, um, sorry, middle left, Dan Ernst. Sam, after the game on the field, uh, you said be early, be loud, and be rowdy. Notre Dame has done a great job of um, having a green jersey game. It's going to be loud, but they're also doing these LED wristbands so that every single person in the crowd that puts one on, you're going to know exactly where they are and you can feel them. I'm just curious, have you ever been to a concert? Have you ever seen any of these uh, sort of videos? It seems to me that uh, there might be some red in the stadium this weekend, but those lights might shine on that red. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been incredible to be a part of. You know, post post game is probably the coolest part for us. Um, sometimes you can, you know, be out there and not even realize um, until the game's over and you look up and um, you're like, wow, the, you know, the entire student section's still here, the entire fan base is still here. And hey, it started in Ireland, um, where you, you know, for myself being new. Um, felt, you know, the impact of, of the Irish nation and Irish fans, just the, you know, global uh, effect of um, traveling across the country and then, you know, coming for the first home game and now having the second and coming into our third. You know, we know it's, we have, you know, that was two of six was yesterday and we got, this will be three of six. And so um, we're, we're really excited and, and really um, appreciative of the support that we have and the support that we receive. We know, um, you know, it's, it takes money to get here. It takes money to come up and travel. It's not easy to get in the stadium. It's not easy leaving the stadium. So um, the support is, is incredible and I'm um, definitely excited to see, you know, what it's all about on, at, a, at a night game, you know, haven't been to one of those, so. Down in front on your right, John Bryce. Sam, when we see you in here, you're really calm, polished, just sort of easy going. You're kind of that way on the field in the huddle or in between plays. But when you make a big play, you're not afraid to, to celebrate or let some emotion out. How, how do you strike that balance? Um, I mean, I think it's uh, it's a combination of a lot of things. I think the, the celebration is just kind of that, um, the realization that those moments don't happen too often. Um, a lot of work gets put into what our, our team goes out there and does. And, and a lot of it's a part of our culture. We don't want to celebrate, you know, the good plays and, and understand that they're fleeting and the wins and um, are all very hard to come by. And so 
I think we, as a as an offensive unit and as a defensive unit as well, you can see on the tape. I mean, um, you know, the the pure joy and and happiness that it brings to go, you know, make a big play, go score a touchdown, and especially at home too. You know, you can hear the crowd and um, you know the thousands of people that are screaming. It's 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 a fun part and it's um, you know good to sometimes let loose and and then obviously be able to reel it back in is is huge. And did it take you a while in your playing career to sort of allow yourself to embrace those moments? And then what allowed you to develop that early confidence that you referenced with Marcus Freeman and the other people in the goon? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's probably more just the ebbs and flows of it and being able to handle the, you know, ups and downs. Um, and then with Coach Freeman, I mean, I think, um, you know, you see the day in and day out of him and kind of how he, you know, looks and can be perceived. But um, I think his just... His number one thing is just his consistency every single day. Like I know every time I see Coach Freeman what I'm going to get. And that's huge. You know, in this day and age, it's very hard to know what's real and what's fake. Um, and as a head coach, to be in the spotlight that he's in and, and, the, and the pressure that's put on him, you know, it's, um, you know, be very easy for him to kind of come in and, you know, be all riled up or be, you know, tired from his six kids or whatever you want to call it. But he shows up every single day and is, um, is, persistent as I've ever seen and um you know we're we're grateful as a as a team to have him and then um you know on the flip side you know he's you know always shows appreciation for our hard work and what we do for him third row on your left Tim producer so, uh, this past Saturday uh Jason Garrett the NBC analyst said that you throw the deep ball as well as anybody that he's seen in a long time besides the hundreds and thousands of deep balls that you've thrown what are some of the keys for you there, some of the checkpoints that makes sure that uh, allows you to make sure you're on point. I mean, it's really the guys getting open. I mean, I think they can all look pretty on air and, and look pretty, um, you know, off the hand, but if they're not caught, it's a lot of ooh and then nothing. Um, and so I think that it's really those guys getting separation and then um, the O-line protecting, like those plays don't take, they're not quick hitters. They're, you know, they're deep, they're deeper throws. Guys got to get down the field and so, Really, those two um, components kind of mesh together and make it look really good. But when you take out an O line, I'm getting hit in the face before the ball gets thrown. There's no receiver running down the field wide open. Um, the ball doesn't, you know, it might get deflected. It, it's not there. So um, that's really what it, it's not. I mean, again, I, that's something you learn as a quarterback is, you know, a lot of people can go back there and throw the ball really, really far. It's, you know, doing it with accuracy and then doing it with guys around you that you're on the same page with from hours and hours of work in the offseason. And I know at one point you turned to the referee about the, the hit that you had on your left lower leg. I don't know specifically what it is, but did you did you speak with the official about that and where are you with your injury? Uh, I was no injury. Um, I mean, I think I was just curious because I didn't, I didn't really see the, you're not really looking down if that kid just went down straight, but um, after watching it, it was kind of just a, a pile up. So. Um, you know, it is it's football, it's a violent game, it's going to happen. Um, and so, I mean, it was, I'm just glad I got out of it healthy and, and on to the next. Our last question will be second row, middle right, Chuck Freebie. Hey, Sam. You mentioned receivers getting separation. They face a very good defensive back four in Ohio State. What can you do to help them get separation or throw into tight windows on Sarah? Um, I mean, I, I think it, it's all just going to be about execution. I mean, I think, um, you know, you can um, scheme up all the things you want. You can work on beating man coverage all you want. But if, you know, I don't execute, we don't execute, um, and just and just make, make the plays work. At, at the end of the day, we kind of rely on that phrase as, as whatever it is, as it is. It's, it's all about that. And, um, you know, we got to just go out there and execute, and they're going to get us. We're going to get them. It's just... It's going to be a battle of wills and, and who wants it the most at the end of the day for four quarters. And, you know, if we can make enough plays um, at the end of the day, then, then that's going to be that. And, um, you know, as Coach Freeman's probably said 30 times in his interview, we're just trying to reach our full potential and whatever that ends up, it ends up. What do you see as the full potential for this team? Great question. If I had Thanks. a crystal ball, I'd let you know, but I don't. So we'll see. But, all right, appreciate it. Go Irish. Yeah.